Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we can read each individual uh, element on the periodic table and talk about the number of protons, neutrons, electrons from the elements on the periodic table, all right? So uh, I, I, I say over and over again that the elements on the periodic table are almost kind of like the all the list of all the ingredients that make up the universe. And we've also spent a little bit of time that, uh, saying that uh, what the, each atom looks like, right? So all the things in the universe are made up of atoms. That we know of, there's 118 different atoms. We list them on the periodic table. We talked a little bit about what each atom looks like, that they look like they have the protons and neutrons in the very small, dense nucleus, surrounded by these electron clouds where electrons can travel. Right? Every one of those 118 have that general structure. The difference between a hydrogen atom and a nitrogen atom and an oxygen atom and a bromine atom is the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, how many they are. And that the number of protons, neutrons, electrons can be found on the periodic table. And once again, it is a pattern on the periodic table. All right, so today I'm going to show you about a little bit more about some of the terminology and how to read this and then how we can count or find out how many uh, how many protons does germanium have? How many neutrons does polonium have? And so on and so forth. Um, just practicing identifying because that is the difference between the different atoms and thus give them their different properties. All right. And so let's start with the very basics here. All right. So I just picked fluorine. It's one of my favorite elements. All right. Uh, this is what it generally looks like on your periodic table. All right. So our goal here is we're going to learn about what each thing, which uh, these parts are called, and then how from them we can count the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. That's our goal for today. All right. So first things first, we have this top number here. All right. It's always kind of the biggest number. It is always a whole number. Um, this number right here is called the atomic number. All right, that is our atomic number. Uh, it is the list of one. You notice that there are no two elements that have the same atomic number. Every one of them has, I say there's 118 elements on the periodic table because each one has an atomic number and there are no doubles. All right. The atomic number is extremely important. All right. First of all, if you look at your periodic table, which if you don't have yours out, you should get it out right now. I'll wait a second. You can pause it. Okay. Um, you'll notice that there's a pattern. Period or the atomic number goes increases as it goes left to right, and then as you go down, right? One, two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and it keeps going, um, increasing in the atomic number. It's extremely important to understand that that is that there are no doubles in that situation because the atomic number. It's extremely important because it tells us the number of protons. All right. The atomic number or the number of protons is the identifying factor of an element. Any element that has 30 protons is a zinc atom. If I were to remove one of those protons from a zinc atom, it would have 29 protons. It is no longer zinc. It is now copper. All right. So the fact that the, the most abundant element in the universe is a hydrogen atom. It is number one because it is an element that only has one proton. If I add, if I put two, uh, two of them together, I now have two protons. That is no longer hydrogen. That is now helium. It is the identifying factor of which atom it is, or which element it is, or which atom it is. So the atomic number tells us the number of protons, okay? Then what we have here is the chemical symbol. And then, or slash name. Mine doesn't have the name listed here, but yours would, does have both. All right. 
And then we have this bottom number here. All right, this, can, this is where things can get a little tricky here. Oh, sorry, going back to the chemical name. Um, they are all based off their Latin name. That's why some of them, some fluorine begins with an F, it's represented in F. That's why does sodium begin with, or is the symbol Na, number 11? That means it has 11 protons. All right. Um, it's because it's Latin name. Sodium is, Latin name is natrium. Potassium has 19 protons, so its atomic number is 19. It's a K. There's not a K in potassium. It's because it's based on its Latin name, right? Catrium. All right. And so some of them, are, or most of them are in Latin. Some are named after people, especially the ones more discovered more recently. Um, but they're originally based in Latin. All right, all right, now this bottom number here, this one gets a little, this is where it can get a little tricky. And this is where the vocab words get a little hard to handle. All right, this bottom number here is most of the time a decimal. And we're gonna talk about why it's a decimal. And uh, long story short, it is the average of all the different versions of that atom. But we'll get back to that, that's not the concern right now. All right, this is what we call the atomic mass. Until we start talking about isotopes in this class, I'm not as concerned about the atomic mass. But we can use this number. All right? Here is the atomic mass. All right? The atomic mass of fluorine is 18.9984. This is where it can get tricky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number... I'm going to round it. All right. I'm going to round it. So 18.99 rounds to 19. 19 is fluorine's mass number. All right. Now, this is tricky. We literally have had atomic number, atomic mass. Mass number, they all sound the same. All right, so this is why important is going to be going to practice we going forward. It's going to be so important. Fluorine's atomic mass is 18.99. That rounds to a whole number of 19. That is the mass number. The mass number is a, is a, is a combination of two things. All right, it's a combination of two things. It is a combination of the number of protons to find the atomic mass plus the number of neutrons. Neutrons. All right. We should know from previously that this right here, these two things, that's in the nucleus. So the mass number is really the mass of the nucleus. All right. So we have the mass of the nucleus here. That, that gives us our mass number. So in this case here, the mass number is 19. All right. Or our fluorine, because it's 18.99, rounded to 19. We know already the number of protons, because we already know that. It's the atomic number. So in this case here, the atomic number is 9 plus. So now if I wanted to find out the number of neutrons, well, what plus 9 is equal to 19? Solve for x. x plus 9 is equal to 19. This answer here should be 10. 10 neutrons and 10 protons give the mass number. All right? So that's our different properties there. All right, sorry, a transition there because I wanted to run through an example of now how we can I want to kind of specify exactly how we can count the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. So we kind of went over it real quick. 
Now let's talk about it very specifically with an example here. All right, to find the number of protons. The number of protons, remember that's a hashtag means number, it's not a hashtag of protons, it's number of protons, all right? To find the number of protons, all we have to do is look at the atomic number, all right? That one's easy. That one's an easy one, all right? To find out the number of Neutrons. It's not that hard, but it can be a little confusing at first. We said this number down here, rounded, is the whole number. So all we would have to do is find, take the mass number, that's the rounded number, right? Protons and neutrons make the mass. So if I know the mass number, which I can find by rounding this, and I know the number of protons, I can find the number of neutrons. All I'm doing is rearranging the formula, all right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking, if I know the number of protons, it's a symbol for protons, is equal, to, or is plus the number of neutrons is equal to the mass. All I have to do is rearrange this formula to find this here, all right? To find just the number of neutrons, it's going to be the mass number minus the number of protons. So we'll do, we'll do the example of this one here in a moment. All right, now this last one's a little tricky because we have protons and neutrons, which of course are in the nucleus. Then we have the number of electrons that go around the outside. At this point of our lessons and our understand our basic understanding of the atom, I have to make a caveat here, which basically means a, a special situation. I like to call this the temporary truth. All right, what I'm going to tell you right here, all right, is not exactly true, but we're taking baby steps here. All right, we're taking baby steps. All right, in the fact that. This is not going to be 100% true. It's going to be true for right now. And eventually, I'm going to teach you something called about ions. All right? And then it will be the, the full truth. But for right now, we can't understand ions until we understand this kind of more basic level. All right? And we're going to say for right now that the number of electrons is going to be equal to the number of protons. Right? And the reason why we're going to do that, this right here, if this is true, this is only true for what we call neutral atoms. If I have 10 positives, I have 10 negatives, and they cancel each other out. And that's what they're neutral, zero. All right? if, I have four, or if I have 45 protons, then right now I'm going to say I also have 45 electrons, 45 positives, 45 negatives. They cancel each other out to make zero or a neutral atom. All right. So I'm going to put a little star next to this one. This is a temporary. This is what I call the temporary truth. So this, for right now, this is the truth, but it won't be forever. All right. Once we get a little bit more comfortable with some of the stuff, we'll talk about atoms that are not neutral that if I have an unequal number of protons and electrons. But for right now, we're just gonna keep them even. So let's do real quick this one right here, all right? The number of protons, I, used to use, I like to use a P with a little plus sign because protons are positive for protons. Number of protons we know is the atomic number. So in this case here, pretty straight, straightforward, 15. Right? The number of neutrons. I used to use I use a little n with a zero because it's a neutral, no charge, zero charge on uh, neutrons. All right, number of neutrons. Okay, 
mass number, not atomic number, mass number. That means rounded. 30.9 rounds to 31 minus the number of protons. So 31, that's rounded, 31 minus 15, I have 16 neutrons. And again, because we are following for the number of electrons, Again, going with the temporary truth here, we're talking about neutral atoms. The number of protons is equal. So if I have 15 positives, I'm going to have 15 negatives. All right? So now we know how to count the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. We practice it here. We're going to practice it a lot more going forward because this is one of those things that it won't be that hard once we do more and more. The more you practice it, the more it becomes very easy, especially the number of protons is really easy. And with the temporary truth, the number of electrons is really easy. The one that's challenging is the number of pro or neutrons. The key is to remember that it's the mass number, rounded, rounded number, minus the number of protons. All right. All right. Now, I know this video was kind of long, but this is kind of a big deal here, being able to count the number of protons, electrons, the difference between... You know, it has 15 protons, that makes a phosphorus. If it had 16 protons, it'd be sulfur. But now we'll talk about later. If it has 15 protons, but now it has 18 neutrons, as long as it has 15 protons, it's still phosphorus. It's just what we call an isotope, which we'll talk more about later. All right, so now you should know how to count protons, neutrons, electrons, all right, and identify the different parts of each element. All right. I know this video was kind of long, but I had a lot to do today. So um, if you still feel struck, or especially with the new counting neutrons, go back and listen to it again. And you know, it's the beauty of the video is that you can re-listen, re-listen, re-listen if you need to. All right. Otherwise, we will continue to practice together. So otherwise, uh, good luck. And may the science be with you. Bye.